After 12 days at sea, Grant Barker is preparing his fish for market. This catch is coming from the northern demersal scale fish fishery, which is between Broome and, I guess, the top of the Australian fishing zone. They're all demersal species, gold band snapper, red emperor, saddle tail snapper, cods, all the fish that swim on the bottom, it's what we target. This boat is one of five commercial fishing vessels Grant operates in waters off the north of Australia between Broome and Darwin. So from the boat onto a truck and off to Perth. Refrigerated transport down to Perth in two days into, into Kalis Brothers and they'll then process it and retail and wholesale from there. How much are you expecting to unload here today? I think we'll unload about 10 tonne here. Yeah, 10 tonne. Is that about a normal catch for one of your boats? It's probably down a bit. We're often around 14 and 15 tonnes, so it's been a bit of a quiet trip, but as I said, that can happen this time of year. Grant's business, Northern Wild Catch Seafood, is one of the main northern suppliers of wild-caught fish to Australian restaurants and retail outlets. It's not a job for the faint-hearted. Fishers work remote parts of Australia's waters for weeks at a time, as far as 130 kilometres offshore. You've just been out at sea. How was it? Uh, a little bit windy there for a few days, but uh, not too bad, not more at all. Yeah. Pretty used to it now, yeah. but uh, where when I started, it took me getting used to, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Grant Barker has spent the past 20 years trapping fish in Australia's northern waters in WA and the Northern Territory. In that time, the industry has changed markedly, but an ongoing problem that frustrates him is the unregulated illegal fishing he repeatedly witnesses in Australian waters. Depending on the time of the year and where our boats are fishing, um, we, might, we might have interactions with them 15 or 20 times a year. Grant says most of the illegal fishing he sees is near the northwestern boundary of Australia's exclusive economic zone. If you draw a line east-west from Ashmore to Darwin, up on that line is where we have most of the interaction with the motorised vessels, illegal fishing vessels. Since July this year, 86 boats have been caught by authorities illegally fishing in Australian waters. Illegal fishers take fish, turtles, shark and the highly prized sea cucumber, also known as trepang. But not everyone makes it back home. In the past two years, at least 18 Indonesian people are thought to have died in Australian waters after their boats were caught in tropical cyclones. A lot of these crew are young boys, the age of 14, 16, 17, 18, who are going to sea on these fishing boats leaving Rodeo Island and other islands in that Indonesian archipelago and not coming home. The monsoon season is very challenging for anyone who fishes in these waters at that time of the year. We can watch and plot the path, the track of these systems, and we do, and we pull our boats out of the way from them. These guys don't have access to any of that. You feel that there is a lot more death at sea that, is, that we just don't hear about? Undoubtedly, yeah, for sure. Along with the humanitarian cost of illegal fishing, the marine environment also suffers. In the northern area, there are areas there where our skippers don't bother going and don't fish much anymore because these boys have picked all the fish out of those areas or a large amount of them. They'll come in with their smaller motorised boats and they sit a bigger one up on the Indonesian side that supplies them with fuel and ice. We call them an ice boat or a mothership. So they come down, take our fish, go back, unload them on the bigger boat. They ice the fish down, give them more fuel, give them more ice. So, yeah, I am concerned. They're, they're recidivists. They're the same guys that are doing it every year over and over again. They're quite structured and organised. Daryl Hockey represents WA's commercial fishing industry. He agrees illegal fishing is well organised to take as much catch as possible, with a mix of small fishing boats and large storage boats with ice. Done. They're taking all sorts of fish, they're walking over the reefs, they're taking their shellfish, they're taking the turtles um, and they're taking the demersal fish. So they're taking everything that they can find and that's really concerning. Ashmore Reef is 170 kilometres south of Indonesia's Roti Island. It's abundant with marine life and is partially protected by a Commonwealth Government marine park. 
But illegal fishers have also been sighted much further south at Rowley Shoals, a coral reef marine park 300 kilometres west of Broome. Well, what we've got are governments who are out there willy-nilly opening up marine parks all over the place, but they're not actually setting them up with the proper management regimes. They're not taking into account the need to, to have compliance activities. Policing Australia's borders is a federal government responsibility and WA's Fisheries Minister says he will be asking the Commonwealth what more can be done to prevent illegal fishing. It's not acceptable. Uh, the fishing industry is... Um very dependent on sustainable fishing practice and illegal fishing threatens that. They do take a lot of fish out of our fishery illegally and it, do, it does concern me because at some point the Western Australian Government will tap me on the shoulder and say, you boys are fishing too hard, we might have to introduce a quota system or take some effort away from you to sustain the stock. You've been in the fishing industry in the north of Australia for about 20 years. Is this yeah. as bad as what you've seen it, the amount of, of people coming across and fishing illegally? Yeah, sure. I'd say it's probably worse than it, than it was 20 years ago. The Australian Fisheries Management Authority is the Commonwealth's fisheries regulator. It works with the Australian Border Force and Maritime Border Command to apprehend illegal foreign fishing vessels. What we're facing at the moment is a resurgence of a historic issue that um, was largely thought to have been uh, resolved. What we've seen since COVID uh, is, is those numbers increasing again due to a, a whole range of factors, including um, COVID-induced economic pressures in uh, the Indonesian villages where these vessels are coming from. So what we're facing now is, um, is a very high number of, of those incursions. Harley Cousins operates passenger tours to remote parts of the Kimberley, from day trips to the horizontal waterfalls to longer voyages off the Broome coast to the Rowley Shoals. We're very, very mindful of you know, the amount of fish you catch, what species are, the size, to stay well within our, our bag limits. And then you've got an Indo boat there just raping everything. You've got to, you know, it's quite embarrassing, really. Do you, you ever know. feel threatened? I have done in the past at Rowley Shoals when I've, when they you know, over COVID, when there was a lot of Indonesian activity there. Remnants of a suspected illegal fishing camp were found on islands off the Kimberley coast last year, raising concerns about how much activity is occurring undetected. For some, illegal fishing highlights the vulnerability of Australia's remote northern waters to crimes beyond fishing, such as people smuggling or organised crime. There was a, I think it was a 2016 defence white paper which identified illegal th fishing yes. as a threat, as a direct threat. Yes, that's Were you right. surprised by that at the time? No, I wasn't, no, because uh, we had the issue of the uh, boat people or immigrants coming via Indonesia mm. to Christmas Island. And most of those people were not Indonesians, they were Afghans and Somalis and Sri Lankans, you know, just to name a few. So, yeah, I, I was not surprised about that. Mm. Why is it important, Viv, do you think that this issue is, is sorted out now? It's been going on for so long. Why is it important now? It's important because every day there seems to be a new type of threat to, to the country. Whether it's perceived or actual, it's, it's hard to say, but you have to be on your guard for, mm. for, for this. Yeah. What makes this issue even more complex is an agreement between Australia and Indonesia, where Indonesian fishers are allowed in a 50,000 square kilometre section of Australian water in the Timor Sea near Ashmore Reef. It's known as the MOU box, and that agreement allows Indonesian fishers to operate there only using traditional methods. So no motorised boats or technology. Viv Forbes believes the MOU box operating rules make fishers in traditional boats vulnerable to changing weather at sea and creates opportunity to bend the rules. It's the, it's the price that they can get for what they catch. Um, you know, some stories say you can get as much as $12,000 and that might pay off the boat or might help you to buy a house in Indonesia. 
Australia and Indonesia have a bilateral agreement and a working group to improve collaboration in detecting and deterring illegal fishing. The two countries have conducted joint patrols of northern waters, like this four-day operation last year. And AFMA says it conducts education programs in Indonesian communities about the dangers and the consequences of illegal fishing. AFMA has taken compliance action against all 86 of the boats intercepted in Australian waters since July. That involves confiscating catch, along with the fishing and processing gear. But none of these have been a larger vessel capable of storing tonnes of catch. The concern about motherships is a long-standing one, um, but it's one that we don't have a whole lot of evidence to substantiate. Um, in, it, at least operating in the Australian zone. So, so there have been no cases where we've in, detected and intercepted a mothership. AFMA Chief Executive Wes Norris concedes there are a lot of unknowns, such as how much fish is leaving Australia's waters illegally or how many boats may be operating undetected. But he believes most illegal fishers are mainly targeting sea cucumber an animal which plays an important role in cleaning reefs. From a fisheries perspective, um, the biggest deterrence that we have is, is the destruction of the fishing vessel um, because that's obviously the, the largest loss that, that the fishing enterprise will have. Uh, but that can only be executed under some very specific circumstances. Um, usually it can only happen where multiple boats are caught together uh, and one of them is, is big enough and safe enough to transfer the crew from one onto the other so that one vessel can be destroyed. Um, we do have a duty of care to, to ensure that we're not endangering life when we undertake those kind of activities. Just eight of the 86 boats intercepted were destroyed. This frustrates people like Grant Barker, who says a previous policy should be reinstated, where industry worked with authorities to tow illegal fishing boats back to port at Broome or Darwin and burn them. If we stop them illegally fishing and illegally entering our waters and we burn enough of their boats and get rid of enough of their assets, we'll stop them drowning every year in the marine parks. We fixed it in the past and we can fix it again.